Welcome back to the lab folks. So today we've got a little mailbag video and I'm also going to have a little bonus uh, tear down at the end of it. It's something I picked up at a garage sale. So why don't we get uh, started on this? Okay, yeah, this is just some um, flux, paste flux. The typical paste flux, I just ran out of it, so I decided to get some more and there it is. Nothing exciting about that. This is a thermistor and a nice little lug here. The reason I got this at not only just to experiment around with it, but I'm thinking of putting together a little project around a microcontroller and it'll be basically a temperature controlled fan and try to make it uh, you know, a standalone unit so I can add it to anything that needs to have a fan added to it. It could be a, a DC load or a power supply or any other thing like that, an amplifier where I think it needs some cooling. Okay, I think this is a this is a voltmeter of some kind. Yeah, volt uh, volt amp power meter. There we go. Now I want to do a comparison between uh, this and this and another one I ordered. They all seem to be the same size. I think they fit into the same openings. Uh, so that's something I want to check. I just want to compare them with each other. Now, these two here have uh, voltage and amperage calibration. This one's LCD, these ones are LED. And I think I have another one as well. So I just wanted to see which ones are going to be best, most readable, most usable. Uh, these ones look like they have uh, more digits. I'm going to do a video on it. I'm going to get, once I get all three in, I'll do a video comparison on it. And uh, then we'll all know which ones are the best to use. Yeah, there's the other one. So I don't know what the difference is between them. I just thought I'd get uh, three different ones from three different suppliers and see how they turn out. This one's got a longer cable on it, obviously, but basically the same thing. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. This is just a very simple little USB cable tester. Okay. So I've got it plugged in here. Let's try it out uh, for USB type C here. All right, so we've got all five LEDs lit up. You know, I can't even read what it says. So CC, D plus D minus VCC and ground. So this, I guess, is a good cable. It's not an extensive tester. It's just a quick go, no go tester. Like I said, I have a bunch of cables ar around here that I want to <laughs> I want to test, and uh, this would be a great uh, way to test them just for go no go before I test them for power delivery capability and stuff like that. So yeah, this should come in handy. Just another fan. Now this I got this fan here because I am working on a little project. I don't want to let uh, too much of the cat out of the bag. But uh, this could be one of the fans I use in that project. If not, uh, I'm going to have use for it sooner or later. Ah, this looks like the other meter. And it is. So this one, I don't know how this one works, but that's going to be a part of that video that's coming up that I'm going to look into that. This one's got controls on it. Now, I don't know if these actually allow you to adjust the uh, calibration of the different meters. But um, I'll bring the other two back here. There's no uh, no calibration inside them. So if they, if they can't be calibrated, they can't be calibrated. These two are almost identical. This one's got a beeper on it, so it's got some sort of alarm that can be set. And uh, this one's completely different. So, okay, I look forward to that video where we check these out. Ah, yeah, just some power resistors. These are uh, 
0.2 ohms and 0.25 ohms. Uh, always handy to have some of these around. Uh, and, and these, I got these uh, again for that project that's coming up. Classic razor blades. These, I use these for, they're not used for electronics. Um, I use these for gasket scrapers. Uh, they scrape gaskets off of motorcycle parts. So yeah, that's, that's all I use these for. They're not terribly sharp, but they will get a gasket off without damaging the metal. Ah, yes. This is a heat sink. I think this form factor might work. Now I'm going to either use this form factor or the regular form factor you've seen me use before. Now for that upcoming project, it depends on how I can arrange things, but this would, uh, this would actually be quite nice. Is it's a lot of aluminum there. There's a lot of area for your transfer of heat and you can mount fans on here. Hold on a sec. There we go. So that is a 40 millimeter, 50 millimeter fan, and that should screw directly into those holes there. And you can have one at each end to really drive the air through it. Yeah, so this, this might be the heat sink that I use in that project. Anybody guess what project it is yet? All right, Tessman sent me in these two meters to review. Now I'm not gonna review them today, but uh, look forward to that coming up. Uh, the last review I did uh, was a, a complete flop as far as videos go, but uh, maybe it'd be more interesting in these. I don't know much about these meters right now, but uh, I do know that I have them here and I will do a video coming up. Taking these out of the box and uh, giving them a quick look at. Look forward to that video. And now for the little bonus teardown. So this, this is a little coffee mug warmer. Uh, I had one of these back when I was going to university and it got a lot of use back then. In fact, it, it was considered by me to be one of the essential household appliances. Uh, I couldn't have lived without it. You know, all those all-nighters studying physics and quantum mechanics and mathematics. It was very handy for that. But I don't think I ever took one apart to see what was in it. So that's what we're going to do today. Now, Salt On is, a, is now a Canadian company. I don't know if they were a U.S. company at one time or not. I'm not entirely sure, but they claim to be. It's Canadian's maple syrup. Of course, uh, there might be a few people in Vermont that might argue that maple syrup is just Canadian. Yeah, I was just walking around last weekend, um, and I saw a little garage sale. And they had this out there, and I, I picked this up for $1. I think you can still get these, or something like them. I haven't seen ones with switches recently on them, but this one came with a switch on it. It's an older model, but that's not much in there, is there? So you have the plate and the switchboard. Switchboard is uh, just a switch, and look at that, a neon light. You don't see those much anymore. And there's no way to get into that. See what's in there? Without being destructive, I just I would just imagine it's a resistor. So it's not very powerful. It's uh, only 17 watts. So let's uh, let's measure the resistance of it. So 875 ohms. That's 875 ohms. We do the math on that. So we usually have about 117 to 120 volts around here. So we get. Uh, 117 divided by A75 equals so 0 0.134 amps. So 0.134 times 117 equals 15.678. So 
Yeah, I guess at 120 volts would be up around the 17 or 18. So yeah, that's about right. Okay, well, that's all I had today for you folks. Yeah, I hope this microphone works better. I've tried the in-camera microphone, which my camera's just a phone. I've tried the microphone in there. I've tried several different kinds of wireless microphones and they all seem to be uh, wanting a little bit. But now uh, what I'm trying is this, um, this Rode Wireless ME system. It's supposed to uh, compensate for uh, changes in volume and it's supposed to be better frequency response and it's very highly rated. And... Okay, we'll see how it works out. All right, thanks for coming out, folks. We'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.